All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, today's an international day. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's find out. <laughs> it says, um, read an ebook day. Yeah, I remember saying that. We read an ebook day is celebrated annually on September 18th. Mm. Um, it is a day to celebrate the convenience and accessibility of ebooks and to encourage people to read more ebooks. Ebooks offer a number of advantages over traditional print books. They are portable, so you can easily take them with you wherever you go, and they are also environmentally friendly as they do not require any paper or ink to produce. Additionally, ebooks are often less expensive than print books. Um, so, happy ebook day. I remember the time that Kindle was raining. Like, mm. you don't get Kindle, you know, you've not arrived. It's still raining. But sad, the sad thing is that, first of all, somebody was telling me today when I was just complaining about traffic and I said, the person said, get a driver. I said, it's not the issue of getting a driver, that's my problem. I actually have very bad nausea. When I'm being driven, I literally cannot do anything. Mm. I have to close my eyes, take a mint in my mouth and just lay, like, shut my eyes. Rest, yeah. That's the only way I can survive a journey that I am not the one driving. That's how bad my own nausea is, right? So if I stay on my phone for too long, say yeah. up to like two, three minutes, mm -hmm. my eyes begin to spin and all of So I have very bad nausea. So it's difficult for me to read e-books you know, and e that's my yes. thing. And I remember, I think I was listening to Jennifer mm -hmm. and um, uh, Uti. Uti says she liked the smell of the book. I, I mean, <laughs> it's something about holding the book. Oh, and, right? Yeah. And the fact that, you yeah. know, I can just you flip yeah. the book. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm 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 I mean, just get back to it and then I can Absolutely. get the physical library out of it. Absolutely. I love, I love covers. Mm. I've tried e-books too and it's just, I read a page and I get tired. Mm. But hard covers, I can read as much as 10 pages mm -hmm. in Mm. in 20 minutes mm. and i'm still flipping but you know what i've started learning though because i used to be like this physical learner i was learning inside classroom mm -hmm. and everything but because i don't have a choice i'm paying money all these online courses i'm doing i must finish that i must get my certificate mm. i noticed something that if i am so for instance if i am because some of the classes are videos mm. so you just listen if i'm listening to the video just listening mm. i don't get it but if i'm listening and i'm reading it myself mm -hmm. so there's the there's the transcript so as she's talking and following it with my eyes on the words, it's been so it's gotten better for me, my e-learning. Because mm. e-learning was really, really a no-no for me. I struggled. That's why two courses that I started, I dumped them, which I'm resuming uh, <laughs> next photo in December. But I had dumped it because I just couldn't cope with e-learning. It was a struggle for me, but I think I'm beginning to cope. So I think maybe you should just find a way. Because the truth is, right, you really cannot, like me now, I've not been able to read books in a while. What I've done over the years is I've tried to use um, like audio books. So when I'm driving, because sometimes again you spend hours in traffic, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so because you understand, well. because you don't want to drive, so I listen to those e-books. I think it's helping because really you must find a way. Because if not, you can just go by a year without reading. Because there's no time, especially when you live in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, for me, it's um, e-learning. I, I think, uh, because I like to read for pleasure, I mean, it's how I decompress, you know, music and um, movies and then reading, and I actually collect books, you know. Um, so, of course, when I know that it's not for pleasure, it's, um, I'm taking a program or I'm doing a training. More oh, yeah, I can absolutely, it just flows, mm. you know. Um, but that if, I, your first uh, if you had a choice, uh, if I had a choice yeah. you know. Um, but if I'm reading for pleasure, oh no, it has to be a hardcover book. Hmm. Absolutely. Me, here is my own dilemma. Mm. If I'm reading for pleasure, I mm. enjoy it. Mm. But the moment I'm reading mm. for a schoolwork or an assignment mm. or anything, it becomes the most difficult wow. task. Wow. Wow. Like, I, I, I hate reading for academic purposes mm. but then i enjoy reading for pleasure so what i do is anything that i feel i'm a little interested in and i need to research on it mm. maybe for academic purposes i go to maybe google wiki how oh. because then they make you look yeah like they simply yeah, yeah true 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 what did you find for us in your <laughs> okay so um i was uh going through bbc africa and they had this short documentary on Operation Dudula. Uh, I don't know if they can play the video right now. Mm. So just talk to talk us through it while the video is coming. Up. Okay, yeah. So the, we know about xenophobia that has been a thing for a couple of years mm. now. 
So in Operation Dujula, it's like the up updated version of xenophobia. So in the video, you would see some South Africans. It's an official group. They were crying out that they hate foreigners, that foreigners are the reason uh, why they're having um, increased poverty, drugs, immorality. And so they just want to kick people out. And the, what they said is they're focused on illegal immigrants. But then there was someone that was interviewed and he's obviously a Nigerian and he was crying out that he is a citizen, but he's been experiencing, the, like he's now a South African citizen, but he's experiencing the same thing, like they would throw him out through his clothes in the gutter, he's insecure and whatnot. I wish, I wish they would play that. Mm. that yeah, that's it. This is my country, South Africa. I hate foreigners and the government is doing nothing. <laughs> And this is our leading anti-migrant group, Operation Dudu. We cannot be, be undertake by foreign nationals and do nothing about it. Something needs to happen. We are coming for you. So, yeah, um, they are, their focus is to kick all the foreigners away. And they are even taking it a step further to turn Operation Dudula into, into a, what is a political party such that they can contest for South African elections next year. And here is the balance. I do not support what they are doing. I think it is, it, it is wrong and uh, very myopic. But here is juxtaposing it. We are facing a similar issue in Nigeria, although not as violent as the one in South Africa. I was reading a report recently on how um, there is an increase in influx of Chinese and Lebanese people into Nigeria. And I was reading comments on Instablock and I was seeing something that looked a bit like xenophobia, but verbal version of it. People were uh, writing and saying, what are they coming to look for here? They should go back to their country. We don't need them and stop, you know? So... Uh, no, go uh, hard. <laughs> no, but I'm just... You know I say go hard? Mm. I just help you. Because, you see, go and name all the top restaurants. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ho especially the hospitality mm. the, uh, industry. 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 Go and name all the top ones that you know. In this, Filipinos, in, Lebanese, Lebanese, Chinese people. Go and even real estate, yeah. prime choice properties. They are all um, Lebanese people. Yeah. Yeah, so so the only way, maybe, if the government begins to give Nigerians equal opportunities that they give these foreigners and back it up, you understand? Because these foreigners are coming with the backing, sometimes the backing of their own government, their own money, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. If Nigerians start to give Nigerians, you know, opportunities because the problem with foreigners taking over in nigeria is not the foreigner that is the problem it's your government that has not given you as a nigerian better opportunities you go now and apply for a farmland a chinese person will apply for a farmland there's every likelihood that the chinese person will get it quicker and faster but is, is More it space. also the same thing in mm. in in south africa you know because just like we you we read a quote by nelson mandela that poverty has been so has been so weaponized that right now these people are blinded to the fact that it is your government's responsibility to better the co the the economy it is not the migrants that are stopping your country <laughs> from yeah. prospering you know people have the right to migrate anywhere yeah. they want because there are some south africans that are also illegal immigrants in the u.s mm -hmm. but you don't see americans Throwing them out or setting it's not, them on yeah, fire or their business. Yeah. If the government is, is seen to be taking mm. care of Americans, they don't have a problem. If you like, call me your numbers. It doesn't come. Do you mm. understand what I'm saying? Mm. It is when the government is not doing what they're supposed to do for their citizens that it now becomes a problem. Right. So it now look like this foreigner is coming to take away. No. If the government does what it is supposed to do, it's not supposed to be a problem. We can mm. actually coexist. Mm. Yeah, so my, my, let me quickly take my story. First, I just wanted to quickly point out, and I think we should have this conversation tomorrow. It says the police uh, force, uh, the, po the public force uh, relations, the police force public relations officer, Olumu Iwa Adejobi, has said that almost every young person in Shagamu is a cultist. I'll just leave it there. Right? Because there was, a, there was a clash today. It was a gory, gory sight. Then the investigations for um, okay. Mobad mm -hmm. is ongoing. They've opened, I think, a 13 man. Um, uh, panel that would investigate the um, what's it called that w this was done today and I said to you know I, I, I listened to Yabo Ojo's um, video and she had talked about how they were going to write officially so it's not just leaving it on social media taking it to authorities and I'm happy that the police has that's the father of the young man there mm -hmm. the police have actually also set up a 13 man panel to unravel so they've also a lawyer I saw a letter from a lawyer that's written to them they need a corona inquest, you know, and all of that. 
So I, I, I think if, if, if there was ever a time the, the, our, our security personnel really show that they care about every Nigerian citizen. I'm not in this guy's, uh, what do they call him? I'm not in his radar. I don't listen to his music. I don't listen to anything. Mm -hmm. But as far as he's a human being, is my concern. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I have sons too. Do you understand? They will grow up to be 27 one day and even older. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I'm just looking at it. I'm trying to picture in my head. What would, what would this boy have done? Like literally, what would he have done to have warranted his life being snuffed out? Hmm. Do you understand? You, you remember so, you said something about um, an, an, an issue in the entertainment, and I'm looking back and I'm realizing that part of the problem is because you don't have entertainment, unlike the corporate world, where there is a structure, there is HR, if you do something weird, there is someone to report to and whatnot. Entertainment doesn't really have that proper structure set no, up. But that's what, they, so right they, now, that's what they claim to have all those bodies for. But do they really work? Mm. Uh, no. you know? So they we'll talk about it tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, we'll talk about that, especially mm. the cultism thing. Because I saw the videos. It was really gory, guys. Mm. Dead bodies everywhere oh in, in Shagam. Because there was a clash this afternoon. I mean, cultism has gone beyond uni now. It's no more no, it's not, it's it's no more school. When I heard when yeah. I used to hear about courtesy it was university. So yeah. I don't believe that when I finish university I'll be out of it's in now. primary schools now. Now it's even on the streets. Yeah. So you're home, you're not even safe anymore. Mm. Stay with us, we'll be right back.